What is up guys, Alex from This Cobb House, and I have a special video here for you today detailing how to install windows and doors into a Cobb wall. And so I have some SketchUp files here. I'm gonna go through and show you in 3D how I install windows and doors. And every builder does this slightly differently. So um, you might see some differences between the way I do it and the way another builder does it. But generally the same concepts will apply. But um, either way, this is a great system that I've been using. Um, I've made a few changes over the years to these particular designs that you'll see in this video. But generally it's exactly the same, except for a few small things which I'll show you. So in this first little diagram, I just show you kind of the basic structure of what you're going to be looking at for the installation of a window. And I'll show you doors as well. It's pretty much the exact same setup. So we have a cob wall here down at the bottom. And what you're going to do for a window at least is you're going to build your cob wall up to the level that you want to install your window at. So let's say you want to install your window up um, two feet. Let's say two feet from the foundation. So you're going to build two feet tall of cob and what you're going to do is you're going to let that cob dry almost entirely and that might take two, three, maybe even four weeks. Um, but if you have the time I do recommend letting it dry completely before installing your windows on top of that ledge. So if you don't let it dry completely, you could have um, shifting of your frames and things could get um, out of plumb, out of level. And you, you want to avoid that if possible. So the best strategy is to build your cob up to the level you want it let it dry completely then you're going to set your window frame all right so basically your window frame is going to be a box that surrounds the finished window um, let me see if i can find a more finished yeah here okay so this one we actually took out the outer frame so let me see if i can find another one for you I have all kinds of diagrams here. Maybe it's down here. No. Nope. All right. Well, um, let me just go back to the beginning here. All right. So we have the window frame. Now this box is optional to leave in here permanently. Um, I kind of go 50-50 on leaving these in and keeping them permanent. So in this second picture here, they've actually been taken out and then the finish window has been installed. So what we did is we installed this frame and then what we did was built the cob up along the sides of it. And as we built it up, we installed these window frame anchors, also known as dead man. And they have, uh, they can be very simple. They can just be a block of wood extending like this piece and then a piece of wood on top. And then I like to use these pegs to peg through. So what we do is we build the cob up. We install this piece right here on top of the cob. We drill it in, screw it in from here. So that way it's attached to this frame. And then I peg these, uh, put these pegs down through into the fresh cob beneath. So this piece is not going to pull out. There's almost no way that this piece can be pulled out once it's covered in cob. So these pieces are actually embedded in the wall 
you can't see them because they're completely covered here but these are reflected over on this side but they're completely embedded inside the cob and the screws go from the frame or the window right into those window anchors so this this window cannot be pulled out unless these were somehow to be pulled out from the cob that's why they're called anchors because they really anchor the windows and the doors into the cob so again we built up the cob along this frame all the way to the top and then very similarly what we did once the cob is up to this height we let the cob dry completely and then we install the lintel so the lintel is a piece a rigid piece structural piece that holds the weight of the cob any cob or weight that's above this opening whether it's a window or door the lintel holds all that weight um, structurally over the opening so I'll get a little bit into lintels here a lintel can be made of wood in this particular diagram it's wood three separate pieces connected so it can be wood it can be stone I prefer concrete because um, for one concrete can be um, poured to any shape a lot of the time a cob wall is not completely straight on the sides so if you needed to pour a lintel that was slightly let's say like from here oh, let me get another tool here let's say our lintel was slightly more narrow the wall was slightly more narrow there and thicker there and then we had uh, let's say just for example sake here so it, it kind of narrows down at this end and it's tapers out to the full width at this end so trying to get a piece of stone or wood to that shape is a little more tricky so what I like to do is just create forms for whatever particular shape the lintel needs to be and then you can pour the concrete into the form and it will come out whatever shape that form is um, also another great benefit of concrete is usually it's cheaper than wood or stone for this particular case um, especially trying to find a piece of wood of this dimension is not easy and it's not cheap um, same with stone trying to find a piece of stone this size this massive size and then cutting it to this particular shape is very expensive and labor intensive so concrete you're actually saving money it's very structural you can put rebar in it which is um, very good for a lintel like this and another great advantage to using concrete is you can pour it in place so we make our forms up here and then we pour the concrete into this form then remove the forms and we have a lintel so with wood or stone let's say we have a piece to this dimension you know but it's starting on the ground here how are we going to lift that all the way up here and place that especially if it's one solid piece of stone you know you're going to have to have a crane that is not light that's going to be hundreds and hundreds of pounds so again another nice little advantage of concrete and not to get off topic but uh, yeah don't discount concrete as a material for components in your house whether it's a, a cob house or not all right so getting back to the window frame concept here um, let's go to the next next pictures here okay this kind of shows um, yeah I wish in this example I had still left the outer frame that yellow frame that was this color 
So that would be like here, and then this frame would fit inside that. So you have options. You can take out, you can take out this frame once you built the cob walls up, remove all these, and then install your final window, and then just drill back right into these anchors. Or you can leave the outer frame and then have this frame inside that, but just make sure you all you measure it all properly from the beginning. And let's see what else we got here. We've got, uh, this is just demonstrating shims and some caulking here to fill in gaps. Uh, the shims are to level out the window and get it uh, level and plumb and straighten all that. All right, let's see. And this is showing this gap here. So whatever your opening is, let's go back to this first picture again. Whatever your opening size is here, this entire opening, let's say we want to fit the finish window inside of here. You want this entire opening to be bigger than the actual window that's going to fit inside. Because you want to have some wiggle room to fit that window in and get it leveled out. Now, if that window is exactly the size of this opening, it's going to be really tight and you're not going to have any wiggle room to get that window leveled out. So, this is just showing the gap. You want to have like a, about a quarter inch gap at least on every side. Let's actually measure this, see what I put here. Half inch, quarter inch. All right. Yeah, so something about like that. And uh, up here. Uh, let me make a note about these. Let me go back to this first. So in these particular diagrams, which I did a couple years ago, I put these plates up at the top of the window frame. I don't do this anymore and I don't recommend you do it. It's really not necessary. What this does is distributes the weight of the lintel across the entire width of the wall. Um, this can be a benefit more if you place a lintel before the cob has completely dried because this will distribute the weight of the lintel over the entire width of the wall reducing um, the lintel from settling you know unevenly but I don't recommend doing that um, let your cob dry entirely before you place a lintel and you don't need this at all just forget this build the cob all the way up to here let it dry and then place your lintel. Let me get back. All right, so there we go. Again, just showing some gaps there. Um, window sills. All right, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, so window sill is, I recommend building a window sill before you put your windows in. So, let's see, I can show it better over here. Or let's see, actually here, this is a good example. All right, so what you're gonna do is, again, you're gonna build your cob up to the level that you wanna place your window. But instead of putting the window right on top of the cob, we're gonna build a window sill first and I'm not gonna get into details on how to build those. Again, I like to do concrete, but you can do stone or wood still. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna build your cob up, place your window sill, and then you're gonna place the window frame on top of the window sill. All right, and then continue to build the cob up from there.
and window sills, it's good to have a drip line. So as that water runs off, it, uh, it, the water will track underneath and potentially can track all the way to the cob wall and then run down your wall. So what you want to do is cut a drip line somewhere on the bottom of this uh, windowsill here. And that way the water will track and it'll catch on this little edge here and uh, it'll just drip right from here instead of tracking under a wall. All right, so that's what it will look like when it's finished. Again, these won't be here and your lintel will uh, be showing on the face of your wall. So it's, it's a good idea to pick out nice material, make your lentils look good because they will show. You can cover them up, but it's, it looks better in my opinion if they show. So you got your window sill, your window, and then your lintel. And that's kind of the complete package. And then all your anchors are inside the cob wall holding the window in. All right, now we're looking at a door and really the same exact concepts apply. It's just kind of a different dimension here. Um, in this case, we have it set into the stem wall. This is not exactly the most detailed picture, but this is a stem wall. Um, it's extended below grade. And so this is probably about ground level right here. And so the doorway is cut into the stem wall and set. Then we've got it uh, attached here. And then we've got the anchors all the way up and the lintel. Now in this case, you do see that the finished door is actually set inside the wooden outer frame so you can do the same thing for your windows um, you can do it either way you can leave this or you can take it out uh, it's usually better to leave it I think it gives a little bit more strength and structure to the window or the door that's installed but um, do cover this up because it's kind of it's not like a a finish looking product you want to cover this with trim or plaster in the end again just demonstrating the same same concepts here you want to leave your gaps so you can install this finished door get it leveled out all right and then we got the cob which will go all here all the way up to the top Lintel installed, good to go. Um, okay, I don't know what this one's about. Just the same as that first picture. All right, and that's what the door will look like finished. And then from the inside. So at the very end, again, what I'd do is this, these boards here, I would put some kind of finish either finish wood or plaster over these. Um, in the case of a cob building, I would probably plaster over it. So I would most likely put some kind of a wire mesh, like a chicken wire, covering all of this wood. And then the plaster from the wall would come over all the way here and um, smooth this all out. So none of this would be showing and it would all look seamless with the wall over here. So that's basically it for installation of windows and doors. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I know this can be a little confusing at first and uh, I hope these diagrams helped you out. I know it's not quite the same as seeing it in person done but I think this gives you a good 
visualization. And uh, let me know what you think. And I'm going to make more videos like this detailing the different components of a cob building. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you got some value out of this. And I'll talk to you in the next video.